This video is going to cover the bootstrap method. The goal of the bootstrap method is to estimate the sampling distribution of an arbitrary statistic. Now you got to remember that a statistic is just some function of random variables. So we're going to estimate the sampling distribution for an arbitrary function of random variables. Because the function is composed of random variables, the output of the function itself is a random variable. Since random variables have distributions, we can imagine the shape of the multiple samples from the function evaluations themselves. Okay, so here we go. This is a simple change, relatively simple change, from the central limit theorem videos before where I kind of built up the idea of the sampling distribution by repeatedly sampling from the population and calculating the function of interest. We are going to do a relatively simple change from those videos where instead of resampling from the original population, we are going to resample from the one original sample that we got from the population. So if our original sample contains all the information we have about the population, then theoretically resampling the sample will enable us to estimate the sampling distribution just the same. So we will resample from the original sample of data with uniform probabilities and with replacement. We've seen those words before, we just gotta kinda have to reimagine them in a new context, and we'll do that. Um, this is a very general method, the bootstrap is a very general method that has seen widespread use in statistics and machine learning, so I really like incorporating it into my class. Uh, and I forgot one last piece of the outline here, is after we kinda go through uh, on pen and paper what the bootstrap method looks like, we will do an example in R. So let's start on pen and paper. We are going to, once again, remember this is a direct follow-up to the central limit theorem and sampling distribution videos we have earlier. We're going to once again imagine we have capital N independent and identically distributed uh, random variables from some population. Theoretically, we don't really care what that population is. It could be left skewed or right skewed or symmetric so long as the variance of that population is finite. Everything should mostly work out. So our goal here is to resample from x1 through xn with uniform probability and with replacement. So what we'll want to do then is take one, that's one, new sample from the original data. And let's say we call them x subscript 1 1 for this is our first resample from the data and we got a first observation and we resample all the way down to x 1 n which is to say we are going to resample uniformly from the original data with replacement and the size of original data. That is, on the first resampling here, we will take out capital N observations. From this newly resampled vector, we will calculate whatever function, whatever statistic of the data it is that we want, and we might as well mark this T1 because this is the first observed random variable of the function of the data. This process just rinse and repeats. So for our second resample, we will draw 
uniformly with replacement the size of the original data, a first observation in our second vector of resampled data. We will continue down to, for our second resampling, the nth observation uniformly uh, sampled with replacement from the original data. And from this, we will calculate our second evaluation of that function t, whatever that function t might be. This is going to be wrapped in a for loop of length capital R, such that we get on the capital Rth resample of the first value from, uh, resampled from our original data, and we go all the way down to our capital Rth nth resample from our original data, and you guessed it, from this vector, we calculate out the capital Rth evaluation of the function t on our resampled data. If you think about the evaluations of these functions t, we essentially have then capital R random variables from some distribution. We don't yet know what that sampling distribution is, what shape it takes on, but we do give that distribution a name. We just call it the sampling distribution of the function t. From that sampling distribution, or that sample from the sampling distribution of t, the capital R observations we have, we can then go about estimating really any um, parameter of the sampling distribution we want. So we could estimate, let's say, the shape of the sampling distribution. So if that function t were the sample mean, then the central limit theorem would tell us that the distribution of t is approximately normal. But it doesn't have to be normal if the function t is not the sample mean. Okay, so let's take this idea and see if we can put it into practice in R. Now, when I said we are going to resample from the original data, many of you might imagine that we had a sample of data x and we will resample directly from that vector. But I would be remiss in my duties if I didn't teach you good programming practice that minimizes memory use. So instead, I'm going to encourage us to sample not from the original data, but instead sample indices of the original data and use those to index the vector x. So let's see what that looks like. If we have a vector of length 10 of random data, what I want us to do is go to our old friend sample, where we're going to sample from the integers 1 to n. You can get that from the function sample by just putting in the length of the vector's indices you want to sample from. We're going to sample n observations. That's where we get sampling the length of our original data. We will sample with replacement. And as long as we don't specify prob, we will get uniform sampling. So we will get randomly sampled indices of the vector x by repeatedly calling this function sample as so. Now the catch here is if you store that vector of indices, you can then index the vector x with the vector idx and get repeated sampling of the vector x. I encourage you to spend a good amount of time with the code I just showed you that will help us through resampling a vector of data in R. I'm going to leave it to you to pause and rewind and rewatch until that bit of code makes sense to you. Once you've done that and taken your time with it, please come back to the video where we will show what the bootstrap method looks like in R. 
in R, we are going to pick a sample of size, I don't know, 3140. And I'm going to sample from a distribution you haven't seen much of yet, just to show you how general this method is. So we're going to take one sample from the distribution gamma 2, 3. And here it is. That's way too much data to look at. We'll trust that x now has some data in it. And we can go about resampling from x, our original data, uniformly with replacement and the size of our original data, that is n. So we will do all the same things we saw earlier in our video. We will declare some number of for loops. When you're implementing the bootstrap method, you should almost always pick a thousand and one or higher as the number of resamples to take. Why don't we calculate sample standard deviations from the gamma distribution? So we will name a pre-allocated vector appropriately. We're going to run a for loop where in each loop we are going to resample indices of our vector x uniformly and with replacement. Then we will calculate x indexed by idx, that's where we get our resampling. We're interested in the function standard deviation applied to this resampled vector, and we should store into the rth element of our pre-allocated vector the function sd applied to the resampled vector of data. And that's actually all we need to implement the bootstrap method. So we have, I think, already loaded the library dplyr. So we can, for instance, create a data frame with our sample of standard deviations and then make a density plot from these bootstrap resampled standard deviations. So here is a plot that represents an estimate of the sampling distribution for the standard deviation where your original data came from a gamma 2, 3 population.